everyone. Welcome to Pathfinders. It is great to see you. I'm just going to see the comments, see who's saying hello. Jaden says, hi, brilliant. It's nice to see you. So we are doing all about dragonflies today. Jack's here, brilliant. Hi, Jack. And we're going to have our usual story. We're going to have our nature walk. We're going to have our scraptastic at the end. But we're also going to have lots of fun as per usual. And remember that rule is to have fun and join in whatever way feels comfortable for you. If it's standing on your head and your grown-ups are okay with that, do it. If it's just lying down and just watching and not joining in everything straight away, that is definitely okay too. Alicia's here, Myla's here, Sophie's here, Lily, Katie, June. I'm having to go back to see people. Daisy, Dawson and Darcy, brilliant. Ophelia and Hugo and Corey are here. Brilliant. It is so good to see you all. And if you're watching this on Catch Up, hello as well. It's great to see you too. We're going to get into a quiz while people are coming in. Oh, someone saw a dragonfly. I've only seen one dragonfly that I remember in my whole life. They are quite tricky to find. So that is brilliant. Rose is here. Hi. Hi, Isabella and Nathaniel, Dexter and Dizzy. It's great to see you. It is here. So many of you. It is hot today, isn't it? Oof, I am really, really hot. Brilliant. Let's get into this quiz. So it's going to give you some clues and you have to guess what the mini beast is. Someone else saw a dragonfly? You're obviously living in much more dragonfly friendly places than I am. Right, so Ruby, hi as well. Isabel, hi. Willow and Caden, hi. If I forget to say hi, you can say again later and I'll try and remember to say hi. Idris is here, brilliant. Keep saying brilliant. Do you ever have a word that you just keep saying and you can't get your head out of that word? Brilliant seems to be my word today. Anyway, let's get into this. I'm going to make it nice and big for you. Oh, that's as big as it's going to get. All right, so here we go. So I am long with lots of legs. That is the first clue. You're gonna get three clues in total. You can wait to the end to answer or you can shout it out or just think it in your head. Someone else saw dragonflies and damselflies. <sighs> Honestly, I need to come and hang around out with where all of you are to do my nature walks because I did not find a single dragonfly this year or last year when I was looking for them. All right, so some people are guessing stick insects. We've got grasshoppers guests. I will turn into another mini beast. That is a massive clue. Hmm. I guess centipede when I had that first clue, but not for the second one. I was born from an egg. What do we think? Long and lots of legs, turn into another mini beast, born from an egg. Yep, a lot of you have got it. It's a caterpillar there at the bottom, you can see. Right, click the leaves for clues. I have six legs. Well, that could be pretty much anything. Six legs. Daisy's seen a dragonfly too? How? You're going to have to give me some tips for how to see them. I have six legs. What could it be? Next one. I can fly. That does narrow it down a little bit, but this is still well, big clues that could apply to lots of different things. Let's hope this third clue is a bit better. I have spots. I've got it. What do you think it is? Yes, some of you have got it. Ladybugs or ladybirds. There it is at the bottom there, a teeny tiny one. This one. You know the one started off with a really tricky clue. This one is quite easy. I like to spin webs. Do we need any other clues? I don't know. Let's go through them very quickly. I have eight legs. Yep, we've got it. I like to eat small insects. They actually eat dragonflies, I found out as well. I guess it'd have to be a small dragonfly and a bigger spider. It's a spider, yes. Well done. That one was quite straightforward. I carry my home with me. Hmm. I carry my home with me. I think this one, that's a bit of a, a bit of an easier clue as well to start off with. I don't have any legs. So not an insect. Yes, you've all got it. I leave a slimy trail. Yep. They left one all outside my front steps today. Well, am I a snail? Yeah, that one was easy. I lay eggs on plants. Well, that also could be a ton of different mini beasts. A lot of them lay eggs on plants. Let's have the second one. I have four wings. Hmm, four wings. A lot of them have four wings, though. Even if you think about it being two sets, you know, for the butterfly, it's actually um, got two wings. It's two sets of wings. Or some people are guessing B. 
I came from a chrysalis. It's a butterfly. Yes, well done. I am very strong. No, this one is not about me. You don't have to guess, Rachel, even though check out those guns. I'm very strong. What is next? I live in a nest. Huh. Did look at these, but I've forgotten them. Some people are guessing ants. Let's see what the next one is. I work for my queen. This could be, I reckon this could be two different things, although the strong one is definitely a big clue. Yep, you all got it, and ant, well done. Brilliant. So that's warmed our brains up a little bit. Let's get that off the screen. So we are going to be talking about dragonflies. So of course, when I went to think about what story we were going to go for, I could only do one creature, and that was dragons so our story is going to be all about a dragon and i have an extremely special guest that i've got i mean this is a world famous person coming to tell you this story so get comfortable grown-ups go and get yourself a nice cold drink if you want relax if you want to doodle on your sheet of paper while you're watching you can do that too but let's have oh hang on the story's not there this is because there's some magic and mystery going on today and i think think it's because of that so i tell you what i'm going to download it make sure we've got it oh this has never happened before while i'm doing that we'll play a game to do with these mythical magical creatures so i'm going to hold up a picture and you need to move like it we'll play some of them now and then we'll play um, all of them, uh, the rest of them later. Let me just click these right, the correct button to download. Sorry about this, everybody. Right, so that is stories downloaded from the very famous, famous person. Grace and Rose are here. Brilliant, it is great to see you. Right, so I'm going to show you a way of moving, link to a mythical character, and you need to do it. Are you ready? I don't know what's coming. Shoot an arrow like a centaur. Nice big. Oh, it's very hot, so we don't want to do masses of movement moving around. Let's see what's next. Fly like a fairy. So just I'm just gonna do a little fluttering because I am so warm. Fly like a fairy. Let's see what's next. Tiptoe like a pixie. I never quite know the difference between a fairy and a pixie. I wonder if anyone can is it because pixies come from certain places like Devonshire? I don't know. Someone said it's cold there. Well. Oh, someone made a ball. Brilliant. Right, next one. While we're waiting for this story to come. Sit under a bridge like a troll. Well, if you don't have a bridge, just sit somewhere looking grumpy and intimidating while I get this video up. Uh, what's next? Oh, your parents will love this one. Howl like a wolf. Ow, ow! I like a werewolf. Nice and loud. Loud enough. To get your neighbors very confused about what's going on let's see if i can get this video up while you're howling next one trot like a unicorn trot like a unicorn right come on story where are you i'm trying to find it on my computer to load up hang on you're trotting are you still trotting Cast a spell like a wizard. That is the perfect one to end on because it is a wizard in our story. If I can find it for you, right. Oh, I'm so sorry about this. I've got it, I've got it. So here we go. Ah, you've come to hear my story, young children. Gather closer, let this old man, this old wizard, tell you the story of Dinas Emerus. Once upon a time in a land called Wales, full of magic and mystery and mischief, there was a very powerful sorcerer. Yeah, you've guessed it, me, Merlin. But I wasn't always known as Merlin, no. I used to just be a kid, just like you. I was called Merthyn Emerus and well, yeah, I looked just like an ordinary kid. Maybe a bit more mischievous than most kids, but I had a few tricks up my sleeve. Now, in those days, there was a Celtic king called Vortigern. He had massive plans to build a huge 
fortress. It was going to be the best in the land, right on top of a hill, so that if any of those Saxons came to attack us, there would be no hope for them. But he had a big problem. Every time he was building the fort, it just literally crumbled away like ice cream melting on a summer's day. You see, what happened is every night after the workers had been building up part of this fortress on top of the hill, every night they would put their tools down, they would go and sleep in the tents that they'd set up for it, and the next day they would come out and all their hard work would be gone and just a rubble of rocks and bricks and stones. <sighs> the king was getting extremely frustrated. And that's where I come in because he found out that there was a curse on that land and the only thing that could solve it was the blood of a child that was half human and half magical. Well, if you know anything about me, you know that my mother is a human, but my dad comes from a mysterious realm that, well, I don't need to tell you about that, but that made me a very special kid. So he searched the land far and wide, in houses, in castles, all over. And eventually, sadly, he found me. <sighs> because what it meant is that he believed to make sure his fortress could be built that I needed to be. Mm -hmm. There was great rejoicing when Vortican Fine found me, at least great rejoicing on his behalf. But my family and the villagers were terrified of what was going to happen. But I was not worried. Listen, little ones, to this tale. Because as soon as I realised what was going on, I revealed the true magic of myself. And I stood before Vortigern and said, look... Dear King, I am not just a child that you can mess with. I am Merlin, the master of magic and the weaver of tales. And I wove a tale for him. I told him how under the castle in that hill were two dragons, one red, one white, two massive dragons that would sleep. But because of the noise above them as the fort was being, was being built, they would stir in their sleep and the fiery smoke that would come out of them caused the fortress to crumble every night and that if he wanted to be able to build his fortress he needed to sort out those dragons and I told him that I knew the secret. I told him to, that to solve this problem he needed to set those dragons free that, so that they could have a life of adventure and he could build his fortress and more importantly I would be safe. And well, he was mesmerized by my tail. He immediately got to digging, not him personally, because he wouldn't do that. He got all of his soldiers, all of his workers, all of the townspeople to dig and dig and dig right into the heart of the mountain. And when they got there, they discovered an amazing sight. Listen carefully, it was a hidden lake shimmering with enchantment, jewels on the wall, gold scattered around, and there, next to it, unaware of the world around them, were two dragons. The first dragon was in scales of crimson, bright red. He was bold and courageous, and his eyes glowed with a fiery courage and bravery. The other dragon instead of being red, was white, like snow that glistened from the jewels sparkling down. But he was sleeping very peace peacefully, but there was a kind of, I don't know, a little bit about his smile as he was sleeping that made you a little bit wary. And I told the king that these two dragons were symbols of the Welsh, the red dragon, powerful and brave, just like us, and the white dragon from the Saxons who were trying to invade us. Well, we all stood there looking at this scene, this amazing scene of this glittering lake and one dragon on one side, red and shimmering, one dragon on one side, white and shimmering, until one of the soldiers sneezed. Achoo! It was such a tiny sound, but it woke up those dragons. 
Well, the dragons woke up, really woke up, not just the kind of fiery, smoky snores that had been causing the problems before. They woke up and they were furious. Their sleep of centuries had been disturbed. And they were mad. And they weren't mad at us. They were mad at each other. A humongous fight broke out. They soared through the mountain, out into the open air. There was fire, there was smoke, there was roars, there was skills shattering, there was bones cracking. It was terrifying to watch. But I stood there watching because I knew that those dragons were the ones that were going to save my bacon. So they kept fighting all day, all night. It went on for about three or four days. The energy that they had to keep doing it, the strength, but eventually the red dragon won. He roared and turned somersaults in the clouds. It was magnificent. And the white dragon <sighs> limped off. I don't know where, we haven't seen them since. Well, from that day on, the red dragon became the symbol of our people, the Welsh people, strong and brave. And the king was able to build his fortress on top of that hill. And best of all, children, I was saved so I could grow up and become the most powerful wizard of all time. Well, how about that? Merlin himself coming to tell you that story. That is amazing. Let's see how well you were listening. We've got four quick questions and then one question to think about. You don't have to type these down if you don't want to. You can shout them out or just think them in your head, whatever you would like. So first question is, what did the king want to build? What did the king want to build? A fort. Yep, well done. A fort. Let's see this next question. These are just quick questions. What did the child have to be? They had to find a special child and there was something about them that was important. Give you a bit of time to think. It had to be or she or they had to be born from a human and from a magical creature as well. So probably, I don't know, a fairy dad or something like that. Right, next one. What colors were the dragons and what did they represent? Bit of a two-parter there. What color were the dragons and what did half magic? That would have been a quicker way of saying what the child had to be, half magic, yes. So what colors were the dragons and what did they represent? And you will still see them. You might see someone in the comments posting a flag the flag that the country, I'm not going to mention it because it's another question, has it. So we've got the red and white, yep, and we have the, the Welsh and the Anglo-Saxons. Yes, well done. All right, and next question. Where did this all take place? What country that some of you might be in right now? I know Kirsty, you know Kirsty, who has been on, she was, well, Betty the Botanist, you know Betty the Botanist, you know her, she lives in Wales, and Kirsty, my friend, who looks very similar to Betty the Botanist, she is in Wales as well, so there might be, oh, I've just given you the answer, haven't I? Yep, Wales, a lot of you got it, well done. Right, and the question, what are the truths in this story? It's not as easy as like Aesop's fables where there's a very specific truth. What can we learn from a story like this? And this is one to think about, so I'm not gonna share any answers that you put in, but feel free to write them down. But have a think, what are the truths about the story? What does it tell us about the Welsh people that they have a story like this? What does it tell us about some of the characters or some of the ways that we can approach problems? I don't know, have a think. Right, now we've got to get the rest of these things moving around. So you've had a sit down, we're going to do a bit of moving. We're going to start off with casting that spell and then see what else we've got there as well. Okay, so cast a spell like a wizard. Is it a wand? Is it just with your powerful hands? Next one, dig for gold like a leprechaun. We've had some of these characters in our stories, haven't we? We've had to find us. Dig for gold, get really deep in there. Roar like a dragon. There's that red dragon. Let's have a ginormous roar again. Wake up your neighbors who are having a sneaky nap. Stretch your neck like the Loch Ness Monster. Get a nice big stretch in there. 
swim like a mermaid. Let's see you swimming and diving. And last one, sit still like a sphinx, as still as you can. Fantastic. Right, well, we are going to have our nature walk now. And then, sorry, I'm catching my breath. I think it's just because it's so hot. So we're gonna have our nature walk now. We're gonna learn all about dragonflies. And then we'll have a little bit of quiz and a bit of moving around as well afterwards. So again, you can relax, you can be taking notes, do whatever you need to, to help yourself with this one. Finders, so yep, I'm going on my nature walk right now. Oh, camera's a bit wobbly, sorry about that. And I'm gonna be talking to you about dragonflies. Now I don't think that I'll find any dragonflies, but who knows, nature is very surprising, but I'll show you what I find along the way. Now, some of this video is going to be set back a year ago when I was talking about dragonflies another time, but you'll be able to tell because in those videos, the rain is chucking it down and in here, there is hardly any water at all. So dragonflies are flying insects, at least for part of their life cycle. And just like grasshoppers, they go through incomplete metamorphosis or this word up here. Remember, we learned some of those fancy words. So instead of having four parts of the life cycle, like butterflies might or ladybirds, they only have three parts. So they start off as eggs. The female dragonfly can lay hundreds of thousands of eggs. Remember, a lot of creatures do that when they know that some of their eggs might be damaged, might be attacked, might be eaten by predators, so they have as many eggs as possible so that they've got a high chance of survival. So they lay sometimes on leaves near the water, always near water, and sometimes directly into the water. I'm gonna show you some videos of that happening while I'm talking. So as the female dragonflies are laying those eggs, sometimes the male dragonflies kind of hover around to protect them, which I think is really nice. Um, they only take about two to five weeks to hatch those eggs, so not long at all. So the second stage of that life cycle is really long. It's the longest part. It can be up to a few years where the dragonfly is a nymph or its larvae stage of its life cycle and it lives underwater so it doesn't have the wings that you see kind of typical of dragonflies those grow slowly as it molds and goes through those different phases of shedding the skin and getting a little bit bigger just like with the grasshopper we learned about last week if it's colder it takes longer for the dragonfly nymphs to grow if it's warmer they'll go through that process a little bit more quickly and underwater they'll eat tadpoles they'll eat other live prey that is under there and they eat a lot just like a lot of creatures in that part of the life cycle because they've got to build up the energy to transform so they skip that pupa stage where they wrap themselves up like caterpillars. They go straight from that nymph into adulthood and their final molt takes place above water. And it's triggered by how warm and long the day is, the kind of temperature and length of sunlight helps the dragonflies to know when they come out of water to do that final molting and emerge as the dragonfly that we tend to see when we're out and about. The surprising thing to me is that that dragonfly adult life cycle, and this is the same for a lot of insects, is only very short, it's only a few months and their main job is to find a partner and reproduce and make more eggs so that the life cycle can carry on. It's strange to me that when we think of these creatures like the ladybirds, like the grasshoppers, like dragonflies, we kind of think of them in their adult stage, but actually that's only such a small part of their life cycle. The biggest part is that nymph stage where they're eating and growing and eating and growing and eating and growing to get ready to be an adult for just a short time. So I've spotted some larvae of a creature. I don't know what it is. Let's get it zoomed in. Sometimes if you spot one thing on a tree, it might be that it's a habitat for more of those creatures. So I'm going to look around a little bit more. Now I'm not finding many more, but I am finding lots of bird poo, which makes me think that if there were more of those little larvae on the leaves, that they might have been eaten. Dragonflies can see 360 degrees around them. So they can be in one spot and they can see all the way around, which is pretty amazing. They've got really strong mandibles and they like to eat flies, midges, mosquitoes. They can eat about 100 mosquitoes a day when they're an adult dragonfly. They're in the middle of the food chain though, so sometimes they're the predator, but sometimes they're the prey. So birds, bigger fish, 
um, spiders even, and small mammals will also eat them. I wonder if you have any fallen trees like this where you live. So this one's a bit special. People have pushed in pennies for good luck. Now in some places, if a dragonfly lands on you, they believe that that gives you good luck. I think you'd be very lucky for that to happen. It would be a fantastic thing if that happened. We've talked before about how nature can inspire lots of stories and myths and legends. Well, the dragonfly has inspired lots of interesting ideas. And in fact, throughout history, you can see that in some different artifacts. Have a look at these photos. This fossil is over 300 million years old. That's before dinosaurs roamed the earth. And it looks very much like a dragonfly, but one main difference is its wingspan was 68 centimeters. It was the largest insect ever to fly on the earth. Look at it, it's massive. The ancient Egyptians loved dragonflies too. Can you spot this one that was on a tomb? There with a frog. They also made lots of jewellery that had dragonfly designs and the material that they used was quite glittery and it was to symbolise new life and new birth. So maybe that's what dragonflies meant to them. Now this dragonfly is a little bit harder to spot. Can you see it there with its two sets of wings across the line and the bottom right of this ball? This ball was made by the indigenous people that lived in Arizona and for them dragonflies symbolised healing. So maybe this ball was used for some kind of medicinal purposes. So a couple of hundred years later in Japan we see, well, a very big dragonfly on top of this helmet here. It's hard to miss. They chose dragonflies because they were really great hunters. They would die straight for their prey and so that helps symbolise that strength in battle. You can see lots of dragonflies on this armour here again to symbolise um, bravery and courage and strength in battle. Just spotted another insect that goes through incomplete metamorphosis inside that bubble of spit. We used to call it cuckoo spit growing up, but it's not. It's the final stage of the frog hopper nymph, and it's going to erupt from there as a full grown winged frog hopper. And usually you'll find more of these in the same spot. I've seen about four so far. Let's see. There's another one down there, although that one looks like it might be. Can you see it? It might be empty. Dragonflies are excellent flyers. They fly at about a speed of 30 miles per hour, which if you think of the streets around your town, that's how fast the cars are traveling there. So that is pretty impressive. They also can fly backwards. We're going to have a quick quiz now. The dragonfly has been given lots of different names throughout history, so I'm going to tell you, well, what might be one of the names that was given to the dragonfly, and you need to decide whether you think it is true or false. You're going to play as well, aren't you, Ezra? Yeah. Okay, so the first name is the ear cutter. Was the dragonfly called the ear cutter? What do you think, true or false? I don't know. Just have false. a guess. Amelia thinks false, so you have to do this. If you think false, what do you think? Oh, you're not certain. It is true. People would say, they would make up a story to scare children and say that, oh, if you're naughty, then the dragonfly will come and cut off your ear in the middle of the night. Ridiculous. Right, next one. The nose tickler. Nose tickler. Do you think the dragonfly has been called a nose tickler or not? What do you think, false? You're not certain, what do you think? That one is false. Although I think if a dragonfly did pull ah. your nose, it would tickle. Next one. I'm gonna have to check my little piece of paper here. Okay. Has the dragonfly ever been called the snake waiter? A snake waiter, like a waiter in a restaurant. Snake waiter. You think false? You think true? Ezra's right this time, it is true. It's been called the snake servant or the snake waiter. People think that the dragonflies were helpers to snakes and that sometimes, like I mentioned before, could even bring them back to life again. Okay, next one. Were dragonflies called, again, I have to check my piece of paper because there's so many names to remember. 
the arrow bug, the arrow bug, like it darted like an arrow. Do you think that's true or false? It sounds true, doesn't it? Because it goes so quickly. They're one of the fastest flying insects around. It is, Amelia's right, false. I made that one up because I thought it sounded like a dragonfly. Last one, let's see. Hmm, the darning needle. You know, like the needles that you sew with? A darning needle is a bit longer. Who thinks that they were called or are called a darning needle bug? You think true? You think true? You are both right. Yes, because it's long and thin. Some people think that the dragonfly has a stinger on the end or that it's very sharp. They're all myths. It's not true. A dragonfly cannot sew your lips together. That's another myth that people would say, children were naughty, that the dragonfly would come and sew their lips together. Really strange ideas that are not at all possible, but well done. How many did you get right? Tell me in the comments below. Well done everybody. I saw a few of you getting those answers correct. A lot of strange names. I thought Arrowbug was a great name for a dragonfly, but that one isn't true. Should be though. So listen, now what was I going to do? My brain has just gone to, to melted ice cream today. Oh, we are going to do some singing because remember our song, um, head, thorax, abdomen, but we added a new word in last week for the grasshopper and that's mandibles. The dragonfly is really known for how like fierce it is at eating. So it has really strong jaws. Remember, this is your mandible here. Really strong jaws to munch the food up. Did you know that dragonflies will sometimes eat smaller dragonflies? I was surprised when I found that. Anyway, we're gonna do our song. We're gonna do nice big belly slaps for abdomen. And we're gonna do it normal speed, a little bit faster, and then as fast as we possibly can, as fast as a dragonfly flies. So get some room if you need to. I'm just gonna move back so you can see. Ooh, right, are we ready? Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, and antennae and mandibles. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Right. Did I get that the wrong way around? Is it mandibles and then antennae? I think antennae. Oh, apparently some people are saying I'm frozen. Oh no! Well, I don't know what to do. I just have to keep going. So, if I'm not frozen, can you let me go? Oh no! Well, I've got full internet here, so I'm gonna get someone off on Facebook to, to help to give some comments there and to help you out there. Right, I'm not frozen now, okay. It, maybe it was a singing, maybe the singing just like drove it away and sorted out the internet because I've got full bars. So, well, we're gonna do it again, a little bit slower, uh, sorry, a little bit faster, and then really, really fast. And we're we gonna go uh, um, mandibles and antennae. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Deep breath. Now my boss Alistair is watching, he better join in this song because you might see him next week and he might need us sing this. Right, we're going to go one, two, two and a half, three, head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, and antennae and mandibles, head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Right, this time, really, really fast. Are you ready? Deep breath. Let's practice some skills. La 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 la. And you might be able to hear my son doing this as well. So he's doing it right in front of me. But I reckon I can do it faster than him. As fast as you can without just going blah 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 blah. I'm watching you, Ezra. <laughs> Can't just go blah blah blah. Are we ready? One, two, two and a half, three. Head, thumbs, I do an abdomen. Head, thumbs, I do an abdomen. And I am mandibles. Head, thumbs, I do an abdomen. I think that was faster. Than my son, but I have had a lot of practice at this. Great. How did you do right. That? We are going to have a quiz now. So get ready. I'm going to share my screen so that you can see it. And here we go. So some of these answers were in our video. Some of them you might just have to guess, okay? So how do dragonflies eat? So let's get it nice and big for you. Do they order from Uber Eats? Do they catch their prey in mid-air? Do they hide in a pounce or do they do a group attack? What do you think? 
A, B, C, or D. Maybe a lot of people who eat, maybe they like a little pizza. Curry, milk, it is B. They catch it mid air, which is really amazing. When did dragonflies start to live? Was it about 800 years ago? Was it 300 million years ago? Was it last week? Or was it two billion years ago? What do we think? It is begin 300 million years ago before dinosaurs dragonflies and damselflies are part of the ordinata order what does that mean you might just have to guess this one with the information that you've had from that nature story so we've got speed flyers cool creatures with a k and a z arrow shape or toothed ones what do you think it could be a b c or d this one's a bit tricky, so I'm going to give you a few moments to think about it. If in doubt, just guess. That's a nice thing about multiple choice. It is not B, it's D, toothed ones. They're known for really having those strong jaws. Dragonflies can see up to 12 meters, up to 24 meters, up to 4 meters, or up to 36 meters. Which one do you think? We've got four meters, which is kind of probably across your room. We've got 12 meters. I don't know, across the street and a little bit more. 24 meters, 36 meters is the longest there. What are you going for? It is 12 meters, which is pretty far for how small they are. Well done, four out of four. And can you see, let's just check if you can still see me and I'm not frozen. Oh, some people said I'm not screen sharing. Did it not screen share? Oh, that's a shame. Honestly, I don't know what is happening today. That is a real shame. But what I can do is I can put the link to that quiz in the stories. Let me just see if I can find it for you. And then you can have a go at doing it yourself. So, hang on. But we still did really well though, even without seeing it. Well done. So I'm going to post the comments and you can have a go at doing that quiz yourself as well. You should be able to just click on that and you won't have to sign it in or anything. So we've got our Scraptastic challenge and we're going to do our show and tell. I've got some things to show, not that I didn't make, but that my kids made. So we've got this dragonfly here, so many dazzling colours on it. That my daughter Amelia made and we've got this amazing dragonfly oh every time I touch these I break them that my son Ezra made and the wings actually do go up and down as well so there's some ideas of what you could do let's see what you've got up to this week and then I'll show you what you can make for next time here we go I'm going to get my little face up there as well for you. So someone actually had a visitor, look at that grasshopper, in their car, which I think is pretty cool. So I wanted to put that on there. Phoenix made some ladybird biscuits and I checked and they were as delicious as they look. Um, Coral, JJ, Pearl and Rose made these pop-out grasshoppers, which I think are brilliant, and then added a grasshopper to their Minecraft world. Excellent. Izzy, I love this. She's made a meadow that she added some mini bees to. There's a grasshopper down there as well. So colourful. Ollie is there with his pictures. You have to zoom in quite a lot to see, but we've got some grasshoppers there. Fantastic. Matthew has got another picture there with his grasshopper that kind of turned into a paper aeroplane, apparently, but it looks fantastic, Matthew. Jaden has been busy doing lots of work. Look how busy he's been. And look at that beautiful picture that he's drawn there of a grasshopper. Skylar has got her bee and her flower. I love it. I love the fact that you put a queen face on your queen bee. I think that was a really great idea. Attili has got, well, she found a caterpillar. They were looking for ladybirds, I think, and they're on grasshoppers, but they found a really big, fat caterpillar wonder if that's going to turn what kind of butterfly that's going to turn into phoenix has done his beautiful collage like the one that i did have up on here but it fell down during the story 
I love it. I love the mushrooms there as well. I wonder if grasshoppers like mushrooms. I don't know. Lily has got a Lego grasshopper here with its long body. It's like it's jumping legs there. Charlie has been busy as well, doing lots of writing and this beautiful coloring in. Well done. Ollie's got his Minecraft grasshopper and a toilet tube one as well with the big legs at the back. Excellent. And Ruby has been very busy. So these are some of the things that she's really enjoyed making over Pathfinders. And then she's got her lady bird there. Now, I wasn't able to get onto the email today. So I don't have, if you sent some by email, we'll make sure that they're shown next week. But I'm sorry if you did send something in and it didn't get shown. I had technical difficulties, just like I did when I was sharing the screen there. So I'm sorry about that, but we can make sure we see them again. So let's see what you can make this week with some recycled materials. Let's have a look. This is some, this is, was made about a year ago. So at the beginning, you see my littlest kid, very little with curly hair. So let's watch. Well, let's see if we can inspire you now as we get creative together. We focused on the dragonfly for our crafts. We took a milk jug and the challenge was to make a model. So we thought about the different parts. We've got a body, we've got the two sets of wings and we've got the legs and we constructed our own model and decorated it with permanent markers. And then we played a game with it. We decided to take turns to hide it around in nature and we would count and see who could find it the quickest. So we had lots of fun playing that. So what insect do you think you can make from recycled materials? We used recycled material as well to make our dragonfly wings. We realized after we'd done this that these would probably be about the size of those prehistoric insect wings. So we added lots of colors and then we painted veins over the top once those had dried and then figured out how to tie it on our backs and used it to practice zooming around and hunting just like the dragonflies. Then we popped on Twinkle and we picked some activities to do there. You could choose any insect you want to research and find out more about. Just whatever you do, have fun. So fairly straightforward things to do there. You could try and make a drag, a small dragonfly that you can use to hide around and play a game. Or you can make yourself some big dragonfly wings. Some other ideas of what you could do, you could add dragons or dragonflies to your virtual world and you could do a little bit of exploration about dragons. Lots that you can do there. So let's, sorry, so Julius thought his mask has been shared. I am really sorry. I will make sure that that gets shared next week. One of the reasons why it's been a bit tricky this week is because I've had to be preparing for something exciting that is happening in my life. I'm about to start a new job. And sadly, that means that this is my last Pathfinders. Now, it isn't the last Pathfinders ever. There's definitely going to be a couple more before the summer holidays. And it's going to continue in very exciting ways after that. But this is my last Pathfinders. And the last time that you'll see me doing things for Twinkle. And I just wanted to say before I went that it has been an absolute joy doing Pathfinders with you. You are the first group of people that I've done live lessons with and I think it's going to be hard to talk you. You're enthusiastic, you're creative, you're funny. I just absolutely love doing this with you. And I'm very sad to see you. My, well, to see you go, you're not going to see myself go. I'm sad that it's coming to an end, but I'm so thankful that we've had this time together. So I know a lot of you have sent me some messages and they have been really encouraging to me and made me feel a bit braver about doing this new job because I'm a little bit scared about starting something new is always scary and I've got used to Twinkle and used to all of you. So I am a little bit nervous, but because of all your encouragement, I'm feeling a lot braver. So I'm going to be saying bye and this is going to be the final bye, but next week, Alistair will be around to do more. So make sure you watch so that you can see all of your lovely things that I missed this week being shown. And this is the last time that I will be saying these blessings. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, I'm gonna go and have a little, I've got something in my eyes. So I'm gonna go and have a little drink of water before I finish off my last day at Twinkle. Oh. Thank you so much for everything and I will see you, I'm sure, at some point soon.
May the paths you explore be full of wonder, and the skies you play under be peaceful. May the treasures you find be plentiful, and the mysteries you unfold be many.